So a lot of people have been asking me how I make my Machine Mark III sound and look so incredibly smooth. The short answer to that question is, uh, I use the machine uh, in MIDI mode and I combine it with some third-party drum software. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set it up and also how I edit some tweaks to get, for example, those slick screens with the names of the pads and the name of my website on them. The Quest for Proof. So there's a couple of things you need to have in place before you really can get started. And the first thing is that your sound setup should already be working, which means that everything's plugged in. There's sound coming from your speakers and the latency is set as low as possible, depending on the processing power of your computer. We're not getting into how to do all that in this video, so in case you're still struggling with that, check out the description for some helpful links. So with your system ready to go, we have to download and install one little program from the Native Instruments website called Controller Editor, and we need to download and install some kind of third-party drum software. And in this video, I'll be using Addictive Drums 2. So uh, Controller Editor is free, and most drum software will cost money, and Addictive Drums is no exception to that rule. But there is a free demo available in case you want to follow along with the instructions, but aren't willing to start paying for extra software just yet. And you'll find the links below for both the Controller Editor and Addictive Drums. That said, you can probably follow along using any normal drum software uh, like uh, Native Instruments, Abbey Road, uh, BFD, Superior Drummer, uh, stuff like that. The basics will be the same uh, with small variations depending on the software you use. Uh, the only program we cannot use if we want to use machine in MIDI mode is the machine software itself. So that's off limits for the entirety of this video. Let's go. With controller editor and some third-party drum software installed and all machine software turned off, we have to turn on machine and then press shift plus channel to activate MIDI mode. Now, let's run controller editor and Windows users have to make sure to run this program as an administrator in order to be able to save the changes we make to machine. With controller editor booted up, the first thing we do is go to settings and make sure we have the pad sensitivity at the most sensitive setting. Now we turn off pad pages and knob pages. And now we hit a pad on the machine, go to assign, press, and turn poly pressure off. And then we repeat the whole process for every single pad. So now we tap the pad next to the first one, poly pressure off, then tap the other pad, poly pressure off, etc. Okay, now feel free to adjust the colors of the pad to whatever you think is pretty by going to hit and then all the way down. Uh, I personally set the color modes to dual and then uh, I made it light orange when idle and red when pressed just because that's how I like it. Now let's give the pad a name. I named every pad after the sound that it's supposed to play. And we're gonna set up the standard Quest for Groove pad layout, something I've explained in other videos and articles on my website, but uh, just for reference, here it is real quick. So this would be a low tom. And you can repeat this process with every pad and in the end, you should end up with something that looks like my layout, depending obviously on the colors you chose and how you named your pads. To add something to the left screen, make sure that you've turned pad pages and knob pages off. Go to templates and name your template. Um, the name of your template will uh, appear in the left screen. So in my case, I just named my template questforgroove.com. So that's why that is appearing in the left screen. All right, now let's hit the pads one by one and see if any of the pads outputs the same note as another pad. And if that's the case, when you hit one pad, the other pad that outputs the exact same note will light up as well and you should probably alter that so you want every pad to output a unique midi note uh, there's one exception that is for example i use two kick drums and two hi-hats and two snares and you can assign the same note to those pads so give uh, both uh, hi-hat pads the same note both snare pads the same note and both kick drum pads the same note and then um, once you assign sounds you only have to assign the sounds to one pad and then the other pad will automatically trigger um, but I don't like that because it makes the twin pad light up even when you don't hit it and that is confusing to me. So I like it when all the pads export a unique MIDI signal. Now let's start linking the pads to sounds in addictive drums. When you run the program in standalone mode, as opposed to running it inside a DAW, first make sure that the audio and MIDI settings are correct. And that means that uh, you need to make sure that you've enabled your Machine Mark III as a MIDI input device, and you have to set up your 
audio sound guard the right way. And in my case, I actually use an RME babyface card, so I'm not using the built-in audio interface of machine. But if you use your built-in audio interface, you have to make sure that you selected this in Addictive Drums. Okay, secondly, you have to make sure that there's a drum kit loaded because without that, you'll have no sound. Note that the demo version of Addictive Drums does not include toms and some other sounds. Now, press question mark, map window, and here we find all the kit pieces and we can start linking them to pads on the machine. And let's start with the kick. So we go to kick, press learn, we hit the kick pad on the machine and repeat the process for the pad next to it because we have a kick on two pads. And if you assign the same notes to the kick, then you probably only have to do this once and then the other pad will also automatically be linked. But in my case, I have to do it twice. All right, snare, same process, and you can repeat this process for all the sounds. Once you're done, make sure to save the preset and optionally set it as your default preset. And this will run this exact setup every time you start addictive drums, which might come in handy. All right, two final things you can do as a little cherry on top. Number one, use ASCII. I don't know if I pronounced this right, but I'll say ASCII. Use ASCII symbols to name pads to add some extra zazz, like these music notes or these card symbols. Um, you can find lots of stuff by just Googling ASCII stars, ASCII hearts, symbols, etc. And once you've found something, just copy and paste it in controller editor, and that usually works. Don't forget to save your pad presets after you did all the tweaking. Number two, let's assign some knobs to modify the sound of certain kit pieces. And we can set up a knob to control how far we open the hi-hat like this. First, we assign the hi-hat CC sound to this pad instead of a static open hi-hat sample. And then we assign this knob to control how much we want the hi-hat opened by pressing learn over here and then turning the knob. Uh, you can do the same thing with the position where you want to hit the ride. You assign ride CC, and then you assign the knob by going over here, and then again, pressing learn over here and turning another knob. All right, I hope this helped you turn your machine into a smoothly functioning, awesome sounding and impressive looking device, even when you're using it in MIDI mode. Leave all your remarks and questions below. Give me a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you loved it. Goodbye for now, until next time.